All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm so, so excited to introduce one of our last sessions of the conference. Um, this discussion will explore the role of mentorship in the continuum of a design career by featuring the shared experience of participants in the inaugural Black in Design Mentorship Program, an initiative supported through the partnership of the GSD and Perkins and Will. Developed to promote greater representation of Black talent in the design fields. Starting in spring of 2021, this program aims to expand the ecosystem of engagement among Black designers by connecting Boston area high school students interested in design with current GSD graduate students and Perkins and Will designers who offer professional mentorship to both. Through the voices of current students and mentors, this panel will showcase how mentorship can empower young Black designers to determine what is possible for their lives and their careers, pursue their interests, and strengthen their design skills. Uh, this is a very uh, dear to my heart program. I was a part of the inaugural uh, Black and Design Mentorship program myself. Um, so without any further ado, let me introduce our wonderful moderator for today, Rania Karamalla. Rania believes that design should be defined and inspired from and for the community. She grew up to embrace the lessons from her homeland of Nubia, modern day Sudan, where pyramids and architecture were built thousands of years ago and carried stories of human civilization and culture throughout this time. As she believes in the power of cultural representations in architecture, she also witnessed the effect of climate change in the built environment. Rania believes in design that represents the culture and portrays a human value into space, one that solves a problem and tells a story of the people. While working as an architectural designer at Perkins and Will, Rani is now also pursuing a master's degree in urban planning from the GSD. She hopes to widen her understanding of the built environment nationally and internationally and find her passion in the intersection of architecture, design, community, and city planning. Take it away, Rania. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you for this great introduction. And um, with that, I want to say good afternoon to everyone who's joining us today. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I want to also start by thanking the Black and Design organizers for putting this amazing event today. Um, as Caleb mentioned, I'm Rani Karamala, my pronouns is she, her, designer at Perkins and Will, and also a student at the GSD uh, Masters in Urban Planning program. I'm on the executive board of this program or this initiative and really excited to be moderating this uh, informational panel and hold the space for uh, to talk about this. Um, that it's in fact started back in the Black in Design uh, conference in 2019 and was conceived by GSD students and Perkins Oil professionals who really met at this conference. Um, so featuring both academic and professional components, this mentorship program introduced the high school students to the possibilities and opportunities within architecture and design that help them develop their design skills and more importantly, navigate through their raw interest in design and how can they translate these into academic and career opportunities. The program also has a unique structure that we will talk about uh, later in the session. The structure also offered opportunities to students from the GSD to connect with designers and practitioners at uh, Perkins and Will in the different fields of design. Um, so besides learning about the structure of the program today, we also invited a few members of the Black in Design Mentorship family who took part of this program this year. Um, we are uh, here really to just have a conversation with y'all guest speakers and this guest listeners, sorry. And uh, so feel free to drop questions for us, comments, thoughts, anything in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if you're seeing the beautiful faces of my panelists yet on the screen. Um, but today with us, we will have um, two of the high school mentees who joined the program, two mentors from Perkins and Will and the GSD, and a guest speaker who, who, will also, who also took part of this dialogue um, in the program and will be with us today. Um, I'll start with introducing Olivia Fox, who was a high school mentee in the program. Uh, Olivia grew up in Roxbury, Massachusetts, and now is a senior at Brookline High School. Besides her academic excellence, she's also an athlete and a cheerleader who enjoys after school cheer. Olivia has a great taste in music, as we learned. Uh, she loved listening to music, and she also plays the guitar since she was six years old. 
Um, her strong interest in design, besides her support, the support that she gets from her she gets from her mother, uh, led her to participate in this Black in Design mentorship program. After the mentorship program, Olivia also joined the Design Discovery program at uh, the Harvard DSD. Um, I'll pass it to you, Olivia, to say hi to everyone and maybe tell us a little bit more about your experience in the program. Hi, so like Rania said, I'm Olivia and I'm a senior at Brooklyn High School. Um, I joined Black in Design because I was interested in learning more about architecture. So I, but I'm also interested in interior design. So I just kind of wanted to get a feel for everything. It was empowering to hear different people's perspectives and stories, how you can really come from anywhere and still be successful in what you do. I liked hearing about people who weren't always sure about what they were gonna do, but they kept trying new things and found something they eventually enjoyed and continued. Maybe they were interested in one subject, but were able to execute it in architecture. I like hearing this because I'm still young and I'm not 100% sure of what I'm gonna do, but it was nice to hear that I still have time and many other people changed their minds. Everyone was so supportive and full of ideas and the community building was so important, especially at the time because everyone had it tough during COVID. Getting to know people was so great and so amazing and it definitely was the most significant thing for me. Thank you, Olivia, for your reflections. I agree. That's like the the community we built in this program is really um, is really valuable and amazing. Um, thank you, Olivia. And also with us today, Natalie Volsi. Natalie is from uh, Wentworth Institute of Technology and is majoring in interior design. She currently lives in Brookline with her two sisters. Her family has encouraged her hardworking ethic, and religion has been a strong foundation in her upbringing. Natalie loves to draw, to paint, and enjoys poetry and dance. She is passionate about residential design and is a big advocate for the right to access housing and functional living spaces to everyone. Natalie also participated in the Black in Design Mentorship Program and later at the GS, uh, joined the GSD Design Discovery Virtual Program. Um, Natalie, hi. Say hi and um, tell us about you, your passion in interior design, maybe, and your experience in the program. Hi everyone. Um, so I'll start when I was younger. So when I was little, I didn't know I can have a job in design. My mom and dad came from Haiti and set up a good life for me. So all I learned was to work hard and never give up. So my family is very STEM. So I have a lot, a lot of doctors and lawyers, but I never was exposed to art. So I discovered my love of art in school, in English, especially poetry and I also discovered dancing. But one day I found interior design on YouTube and that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And my mentor before, um, Michelle, introduced me to Black in Design and it changed the way that I thought about life. And Wanya was one of my mentors in Black in Design. She taught me that I can make a mistake and grow to be the best designer I can be that it's okay not to know everything, that we're always learning every single day. It taught me to draw all the time and also taught me to like make connections with other people and be open-minded. Thank you, Natalie, that's amazing. <laughs> and you didn't tell me that you put that in there, but thank you. Um, that's great, thank you for sharing with us. Um, also with us today is one of the program mentors, Dr. Erica Itland, who is the director of the Human Experience Lab at Perkins and Will, where she focuses on public health impact of the K through 12 schools, affordable housing and urban resilience. She received her doctorate from Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health in Environmental Health. Um, Erica, hello, we're glad to have you here with us and um, please take the time to tell us about yourself and your experience as a mentor in this program. Thanks, Rania. It's super exciting to be here because I feel like if I had sort of the wherewithal that Olivia and Natalie did, my life would be a little bit different. And I super appreciate all of you at Back in Design for kind of making this an inclusive space because I'm not a designer. But one thing that I do know that is so true about all of us is that mentorship is important no matter what stage of your career 
you can be at. And so for me, you know, my black and brown mentors are the ones who kind of helped me evolve through all of these journeys. And so this program specifically was this magical opportunity to kind of pay it forward. And yet what was sort of the most important thing for me is that on the mentor side of this is actually, I think I probably learned more from my mentees than they learned from me. So I am Olivia's biggest fan, but I think what's so powerful is knowing that we just get to be the cheerleaders for them and letting them become who they want to be versus little versions of ourself, because all of our evolution is, is so unique. And I think this program is really about having all of us kind of come together, no matter if you're a public health or using design as your tool of translation or a designer with clear intent as they move forward. Uh, I just, I feel super lucky to be a part of it. And so Rania, thanks for always guiding us through all of this. Thank you so much, Erica. Um, and I agree, it's, it's about empowering our mentees to become the best versions of themselves in this program. Um, thank you for your words. Um, also with us in the panel today is Wanjiko Angre, Ang Anger, um, sorry if I'm butchering your name, um, who is also you may recognize as one of this year's conference organizers. Uh, Wanjiko also is a master urban planning candidate at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. She's broadly interested in how planning and design can be in deeper dialogue with public imagination as we build a more just world. When Jiko joined the program uh, as a mentor from the GSD, and uh, when Jiko, hello, please take the stage to say a few words and uh, tell us about your experience. Hi everyone, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm Wanjiko Ngare, and as Rania mentioned, I'm a master's in urban planning student in my second year at the GSD. This mentorship program has been incredible for me as a non-background student. I don't come from a design world. I actually come from an international development world. Um, this was a really important space for me to understand more about the design world and how it works on the professional end, and also to learn more about myself as a mentor. Um, honestly, similar to Erica, I believe I learned more from uh, the mentees than I probably brought to the table. We met every Friday for two hours in the afternoon. Now, if y'all know anything about grad school, it is a tough, tough time to meet, but it was wonderful. Every single Friday it was an exciting moment for us. And um, we got to spend, I think, really quality time together and also spent a lot of time during the week kind of checking in. And this program has been really valuable for me as a non-background student um, because it also opened up opportunities in terms of internships uh, in the summer and potential work in the future as well. And just kind of meeting folks who have dedicated their lives to the built environment as someone who's recently realized how important it is to the person I am and the world that I wanna build has been an exciting opportunity. And I really look forward to continuing to build this space. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Wendiko. Um, and last but not least is one of the program guest speakers. David Cotter is an alumni from Baltimore School for the Arts and uh, Morgan State University. David Cotter has recently joined Hype Design Collaborative as an architectural designer in Kansas City, Missouri. David has an inspiring story about mentorship. In fact, he has a long-term mentorship relationship with our program founder, David um, uh, Brooke Travis, who is also with us today. So uh, David joined our program as a guest speaker and we are really glad to have you here today. Um, David, do you want to share some reflections about mentorship with us? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I feel like mentorship is the perfect guide to help you become the best version of yourself by taking advice um, from people that have experience. Um, through my personal experience, Brooke, she pretty much helped facilitate my journey in architecture uh, because I started out uh, pretty much with uh, visual artwork, fine arts. Um, I started out drawing cityscapes and I used those drawings to audition for School for the Arts. And during my senior year of School for the Arts, I became connected with um, her sister, Joe Trevis, who introduced me to her sister that happens to be the top architect of uh, Perkins World, the principal architect of Perkins World in Boston. And, you know, I've, from what I know, um, 
it was a pretty much first time experience for both of us. Um, you know, she pretty much gave me the proper advice as far as, you know, how to shape my portfolio to represent my artwork, combine my artwork with my architecture skills and bring something different to the architecture world. Um, so I would say the main thing is to, you know, make sure that you are taking the proper advice uh, from anyone that's willing to help because that really changed my journey or at least created a better outcome for me. Great, thank you, David. And we will get into a uh, in-depth conversation about mentorship with our panelists um, later today. Um, also here with us, I want to introduce our program founder, Brooke Trivas, who is leading this effort really um, since two and a half years ago and has been a great mentor for all of us in this room in so many different ways. Um, Brooke was impacted with racial tensions she witnessed as a girl growing up in Baltimore and has spent her career creating spaces that instill their occupants with sense of equity. Brooke is also part of Jedi Council at Perkins of Will. Um, she's a practice leader K through 12 and a principal at Perkins of Will Boston office. Um, Brooke, as you can see, she spent a chunk, big chunk of her life mentoring people from different ages, really. And she's an amazing human that you will hear from at the end of this panel. Um, so thank you panelists again for sharing your stories. Um, and again, we will get into um, questions and conversation with you all after some informational slides that I will introduce to our audience. Just these slides are just informational to give you just a, an overview about the mentorship program structure and just highlights major uh, takeaways. Uh, can we have the slides up, please? Thank you. Um, so, I wanted to mention, I think, in the core of this program that uh, was really founded to honor uh, Phil Freelon um, legacy, and he was really the inspiration behind the, the start of this program two and a half years ago. And um, we hope that we can continue to carry this legacy throughout um, this program. Um, as in, in the nature of mentorship, we designed this program to really act like an ecosystem and allow a space for designers from really different generations to collab and learn from each other. Um, you can see here, we're all in a big virtual room. Uh, due to COVID, we only had this program virtually and we hope to have a kind of a hybrid moving forward. Uh, but really also one of the goals is to facilitate uh, these relationships between each cohort, mentors and mentees to continue after the sessions end. So um, we realized that mentorship program alone doesn't make it unique. Um, and we wanted to make it part of a big ecosystem, uh, meaning that we have a lot of in, uh, like um, people interested in this program um, that will create this ecosystem with us. And then and the outcomes of this program can continue to, to to flourish after the program end. Okay, so yes, I was saying that um, this is um, part of a big ecosystem and uh, part of it is to tap into the resources um, that we have in the GSD at Perkins of Will and continue to open opportunities to black designers before this program and after this program to connect with alumni, students and professionals within these um, orbits. Um, so, the program also, after the, the official end of the sessions, um, offer their participants scholarships for summer programs at the GSD, as Natalie and Olivia took advantage of, like they joined the design discovery uh, program at the GSD. And after that, we also continue to allow um, opportunities for internships within um, Perkins Will and um, in different offices for the GSD students. Um, this is just an overview um, of one of the booklet that we did put together for this framework. Uh, the program really started as a pilot and um, it went great, I think. Um, we had a lot of details in there. We did put a framework that is also um, flexible enough to adjust to the people in the room. 
as you can imagine that every cohort and every like mentees and mentors uh, come with a set of expectations that are really different from other cohorts. So we do have a like a very robust framework that will allow for this flexibility as well. I'm going to just give you a taste of one of the sessions that we had um, before we get into the conversation with our panelists uh, to just give you an, like an overview about the tools and the skills that we really focused on for this mentorship. It really was focusing on like um, all the skills, including public speaking, including communication skills that makes a great designer, not only the tools for architectural uh, design, but we also had um, students experience different mediums of um, how do they translate or uh, communicate their design ideas. Um, to promote um, communication, we generally start, we usually start our sessions with how are you feeling? It's a very simple question that will promote people to talk or to just communicate how they feel and just like you know, a, a way to break through and, and talk about our day for a few minutes before getting into like the formal session. And usually people do feel tired by the end of the day. It's usually on a Friday, end of the day, Friday. Uh, but it's also a great way for us to connect and um, talk about our day. Um, from there, we kind of transition to uh, homework presentation speaking and public speaking is a very important skill for designers, like not to only design and have a great idea, but also how do you communicate it and how do you talk about it. Um, so we give the students time to present their homework at this session. Um, from there, we transition into the formal topic uh, of the session, which in this case, I'm showing the session topic is design thinking. We sometimes bring in a guest speaker that has some in-depth knowledge about the uh, about the topic to talk us through it. Um, so yes, the session starts with a formal definition of design thinking. Um, introduce students to different facts about design thinking and how do you start to think like a designer? What are the elements that kind of make a project or make a design happen? Um, we also then shift into or uh, integrate some kind of active learning with some questions so, so the students can kind of think about this from their perspective or from an experience they had. Um, yes, we do also apply that after that in a breakout room um, so they get a chance to like talk in smaller groups and um, apply some of the thinking they got introduced to. Uh, we also play some games sometimes just to also provoke like active thinking as in this case we play the game about like guessing what designers um were thinking or what was the design thinking behind these products or these ideas i'm going to flip through some of them so we just kind of show one project that we think has a maybe an kind of a obvious or a visual um hint to what the idea was um and then we have a conversation. It's usually very energetic and, and people are, it's, it's really a game. So we kind of, um, and then we get to the answer at the end and we talk about the designer, uh, their inspiration and how did they bring this idea. Uh, this is another example of the Feel Free Lawn project. Uh, we also, one of the things that we wanted to promote healthcare and you know, it's okay to take a break and our sessions are usually two hours long on a Friday, so we kind of break in the middle of the hour for 10 minutes just to stretch, grab a coffee, grab tea, or do something for 10 minutes and come back. Um, and the last hour, we usually kind of talk about the homework for the day. The homework is usually an assignment to apply the thing that's you, that you learned um, today, and then we kind of also uh, promote creativity in these um, assignments by, you know, promoting different tools of making this uh, project happen. If you want to sketch it, if you want to use computer 3D models, or if you want to actually build it in 3D, um, just think about it in a very creative way and we kind of promote getting out of the box with, with your ideas. This homework was actually very fun because we asked the students to um, 
you know, like design a birdhouse, which is a very simple idea, but also has all the elements of designing a building. Like what type of a bird is it and how big is it and what color is your materials? Where is it going to be? How is it going to be attached? Where, what location? And this is some snippets of the um, homework exercise a few students were thinking about what, like, um, birds who are living in the tropical and how their houses can be really creative and different. Other students defaulted to simplicity and authenticity on the design, something that is very, really relates to our um, architectural thinking. At the end um, of this program, we had uh, a survey. We were really, um, we did have a very strong uh, relationships within this program and we didn't really want it to end. Um, this is just a snippet of a survey that we did at the end. Uh, people are just saying that how sad they are to be over. But also, again, we kind of stayed in touch with our cohort in a very informal, informal ways. Um, and we continued uh, these efforts to continue to, to let the students understand what career path they have or what academic career path that they have after this program. Um, so um, now I will kind of move back to our panelists. I know that this might have been uh, very nostalgic and brought some good memories for you all. So let's talk about that. Um, if we can bring all the panelists to the screen. Thank you. Great, I see all of you. Um, all right, so Wendiko, I'm going to start with you. Get, have a quick question for you and maybe tell our um, listeners what do you think was a successful thing about this format? And um, how do you think this cross-generational program was impactful? So actually, there are two things that I believe were super impactful about this program. And one of them you've already mentioned is the cross-generational nature of it. Um, I, I have never been part of a mentorship program that's essentially multi-pronged in the sense that there's a different directionality of um, kind of experience, but also interests, right? So. There was the cross-generation aspect of it, but there was also kind of the multidisciplinary side of it. Um, Erica, Dr. Erica, excuse me, um, is a PhD in public health and is here in this design world bringing all her magic. Um, and we've got high school students interested in interior design and dance and cheer um, and folks in planning and, and folks in urban design and architecture and having that conversation around kind of our mutual interest in the spatiality of design really brought something to the table that I think would have been harder to bring if I was just doing a mentorship program with other planners um, or if it was just strictly with other architects, et cetera. I totally agree with you. Uh, I think that's a very strong aspect. I think I also, as a mentor, you learn a lot from uh, being in a place from different generations. Even I feel like I learned a lot from the younger generations as well. Um, Erica, what are your thoughts about this? Well, I just love Wanjiku, so I'm going to say that first. <laughs> I think the important thing, it's funny, having been a graduate student for the last, I don't know, almost 10 years of my life, I think it's an interesting pivot to be about something that is sort of multi-generational in the mentoring, because you now have a responsibility to model great behavior. And so, you know, even something as simple as like a break, you know, 10 minutes, if you can't take a 10 minute break in a two hour workshop or meeting, we're not putting out our best selves and expecting the best of our younger mentees. And so for me, I think it's, you know, even in terms of a birdhouse, as you said, Rania, those moments are actually beautiful moments to model. Like we need to be baking in research into our design practice. We need to be trying things that seem a little bit weird and kind of uncomfortable, but pushing ourselves in that approach. And so any of this, I think, as you sort of think about the generations, it's like, what are the ripple effects we want to have? And who? what is the advice we wish we had when we were trying to figure out everything? And so I think it's coming at it with such empathy and like humanity in this approach, um, no matter the assignment, no matter the small little things that feel like just filler and interstitial stuff that actually are the substance of you moving up in the design profession. 
Natalie, what do you think? I totally agree with you, Erica. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about the birdhouse assignment and how that was one of my favorite um, thing to like design. It forced me to think as an interior designer, like what does the bird do? What is it like to live? Um, like, does it like hot places, cold places? And it was really fun and it got me thinking and drawing a lot. And I also loved meeting people from the um, graduate. Um, and also like high school, I like seeing everybody's different perspectives and idea and how no matter like how old or young you are, um, everybody has that one idea of design and their love for designs and it really opened me. Yeah, that was one of my favorites too, like the, the birdhouse work, um, homework. Olivia. I got into it. I really was feeling it that day. <laughs> I was like, let me let me Google rapidly all of the bird facts you need right now, so we can <laughs> design. I was really feeling it, and I felt like I was design intern that day. And I'm just gonna say it was a great assignment. I agree. Love, <laughs> Love it, Erica. Olivia, any thoughts? Yeah, I also did a lot of research. I wanted to make sure it was perfect. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought. The mentor mentee meetings were pretty good. We got to get a little bit closer with the people in the program. We got extra time to come up with things and talk things out. Um, it was also helpful because like Erica said, they could give us advice on things, even besides design, like applying to college. Um, and it was really helpful to have people of different ages because like my other mentor, Tolu, who was in college, I sort of got to see how she went about her day-to-day -day life and then like Erica who already graduated, I got to see how she did her work and it was really helpful. Yeah, I just wanna quickly add that um, Olivia and Natalie and all the other high school mentees were busy doing so many things and just kind of honor the fact that you guys were doing this during a pandemic. Um, it was incredible how much kind of presence you brought every day, even though we were doing this under such difficult circumstances and I'm very proud of y'all. Totally. I also think I got cooler by hanging out with people like Natalie and Olivia. Like, you know, I feel like even in this call, all of us are learning from Natalie that that is what our Zoom background should have been for the last 18 months, just saying. I totally agree. And I think Natalie, you won a prize for that, right? During the program. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was like most likely to have like um, the coolest background or something. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you guys talked about getting closer to understanding the day to day um, life of the designer, both in Perkins Oil and at GSD, which kind of, you know, an academic side of it and also the professional side. Um, Maybe do you want to talk about that? Maybe when Jiko, you want to kick us off with that answer? Yeah, I'm happy to start. So um, my Perkins and Will mentor uh, was Mark Heller, who's not here um, right now, but he's an urban designer. And Mark really was thoughtful about giving me insight into what his daily um, experience was like. And we had calls outside of just kind of our mentor mentee calls. And he would help me kind of think through, okay, well then how am I applying to internships? What do I need to bring to the table? How do I need to structure my portfolio? And he would take that time during you know, his workday, uh, which was pretty impressive and, and took a lot of work. Um, and in addition to that, I think having folks from different parts of Perkins and Will um, who were doing you know, different parts of design really kind of brought a different flavor for us as well. And lastly, I don't know if a lot of people got to do this, but I got to attend a couple of kind of design reviews um, that uh, happen at Perkins and Will for different projects. And that was fascinating because, I mean, I've been having my own reviews at, at design school and have felt like all sorts of nervous and crazy, um, but really enjoyed seeing how the reviews work when it's like a project that's getting built um, and how it's going to impact a particular space and place and group of people. Rania, I think that's talks back to the ecosystem where we tried to bring people into Perkins and Will and give them those real life professional opportunities. So we're gonna continue with that as we move forward. Um, yes, thank you, Brooke, for highlighting that. That's uh, really an example of the ecosystem 
that we're creating. There is a, a high school student, a GSD student, and a professional in each group, uh, Perkins or professional in each group. And they all get to work together in a system that they all learning from each other in one room and also in the bigger room where all the groups meet uh, weekly. Um, so when Jaco, maybe that inspired you to stay in the design field or did that inspire a change at all? How did that? <laughs> uh, to kind of speak to Olivia's point earlier about not always knowing exactly what you're going to do next. I'm still in that space of not knowing exactly what my next step is. I definitely want to remain in the design world and working in the built environment. I truly and strongly believe that impacts people's lives and opportunities so much that it's an important place for me um, to kind of put my time and effort in the next chapter of my career. How that looks, I don't know quite yet. Um, great, thank you, Enrico. Um, Natalie, you probably got a different perspective, but a closer, also closer look into the day-to-day -day life of a designer. Um, how does that inspire your thinking about design or tell us more about that. Um, so yeah, I definitely got a closer look of what it means to be a designer. Um, one inspiring thing that happened for me is like when the guest speakers came to speak and talked about their day-to-day -day life and what they do in their jobs. But another important part is how the graduate students, like they're still in school and I got to see what they did for their day-to-day -day life because that can be me someday. So I thought it was cool seeing the work, their designs, and their portfolios. I just want to say that will be you one day, Natalie. <laughs> it can be. There was a question in the chat, Ronya. Should we address that or? Um, do we want to? Yeah, I think we, we can, can have the questions at the end. Yeah, uh, we can take questions from the audience at the end. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, thank you, Natalie, for highlighting that. Um, I also want to know from you, Olivia, if you, you know, at some point of this program, uh, during your conversations with your group or your mentor, uh, is there something that kind of inspired you um, that you want to mention or share with us? Um, yeah, so I think I talk to Erica the most, so I'll just talk on that. Um, honestly, anytime we had mentor and mentee meetings, I felt inspired. She encouraged me to do whatever I was doing at that point and was so enthusiastically supportive. And she told me that my words were inspiring and powerful. I was just thinking like, okay, Miss Erica slash Columbia graduate. Sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but she actually helped me build my confidence. And I know that when my dad died in the beginning of COVID, even though it wasn't at the same time, it was nice to know that there was such a strong and great community behind me. Uh, I'm gonna get emotional because here's the funny thing about Miss Olivia, is I haven't met somebody at, and I think age is relevant, but it's an important metric in my brain that has sort of this like silent but deadly eloquence that Olivia has. She does everything with like such intent and clarity and at times you're like i hope she thinks i'm cool but we're gonna keep going anyway and i just you know i think it's that that like doubt that was in me being you know doctor whatever is because i respect olivia so so much and there is just so much brilliance and creativity and enthusiasm that's there and it's just boiling under the surface so i feel like you know natalie same, Olivia, I just, the two of you are constant sources of energy for me. And I think for all of us in the value of mentorship, Olivia, I, you will still come up to my house so we can play with the chickens. It's going to happen, girl. <laughs> you know, as much as it is professional, it's about personal. And I think you can't be a good mentor or a mentee if you're not willing to, to share in that. I'm just allowing some time for you, Olivia, if you want to respond. Oh, yeah, definitely got to see those chickens, but they're <laughs> not as cute as they were with chicks, but that's okay. We'll get there. We'll do it again. We'll <laughs> um, what about you, Natalie? Is there any moment that you felt inspired um, during this program? Um, yes. 
Um, when I had the meetings with you, Rania, it, you encouraged me to practice in my design journey and to ask for help and not be shy. Um, I found my love for design and how you love design like so much. And like you have like amazing stories and like um, it just inspires me to have like my own story and write my own story about design and how you can find inspiration everywhere um, in buildings, in art, in dance, in anywhere that you can do. And uh, I have, I am like good enough, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You are, Natalie, and you're amazing. You inspired me in so many ways. And it just was, as Brooke was saying the other day, like words really are powerful and uh, are effect like you're, that the words that I hear from you is just, you know, as powerful as the words that I encourage you with. And I hope, you know, I'm just, I, I try not to get emotional at this moment. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> But this was this has been a um, very unique um, relationship, and then just to see you grow and get inspired and move forward with what you um, really love, which is design and interior design, and it's really inspired with a very, you know, great experience, personal experience, and depth of like, um, you know, you want to change the world, which I, which I love, and I, I feel the same. So. Um, yeah, thank you, Natalie, for sharing. Um, I'm gonna get back to you, Wendigo, with another question about, you know, the benefit of having a connection with a professional from Perkins and Will in this program. Um, and did this, you know, did this format kind of helped you understand what mentorship mean? Did it change the idea of mentorship in your mind? Did it inspire a new mentor in you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I think just to kind of harken back to the structure of the mentorship program, that was new for me. And it's something that I would highly recommend be done in other spaces and other places. Um, as we've just witnessed <laughs> live here, um, it creates some really deep connections. Um, in terms of the kind of more professional side of it, it's definitely a lot of, there are a lot of resources that were available. And just to kind of make clear to uh, the audience, this was a pilot, right? So it was a small group of us kind of testing this out, testing the structure out um, and seeing how well it could work. Uh, in my opinion, it worked really, really well. Um, and one of the things that was really helpful for me professionally is having that person who is in that world already saying, okay, well, this is what you need to do in order to kind of um, have a better portfolio, be more um, you know, a better candidate in A, B, and C ways. This is what about you that you need to bring out because I think I had also just like looked up how should I structure my portfolio somewhere and Mark was like, I don't see you in this at all um, and you got to bring that back and I was like, you know what, you're right. Uh, just because I'm, I'm new to this world, I had a lack of confidence about how much of kind of myself I could bring to that um, and he was able to kind of say, okay, this is how we're going to tweak it so you can bring the skills that you're learning, the things that you want to learn, and also the person that you are um, mm -hmm. into this space. And I, you know, this summer, I talked to you, Rania, as well. I had two internship opportunities. One was with Perkins and Will, and one was with another firm as well. Um, in the, the summer, I chose this other firm just because I want to do Perkins and Will in person. So let's talk, Brooke. <laughs> but, um, you know, the other firm just was a little bit easier to do virtually. But the process itself, I got to go through the interview process and understand uh, that works as well. Um, so extremely meaningful in having that connection and having uh, that structure and mm -hmm. happy to talk to anyone who is in the audience that finds themselves wanting to, you know, find something that works in their particular geography as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think also this will tie into my next question about fostering um, relationships with um, your mentors and your mentee in, in this, and then you kind of continued as you were mentioning when Jiko that you had the connection with Mark and me after when you were applying and after the session, formal session ended. Um, so I want to direct this to Erica and to tell us about, you know, the importance of these fostering these relationship and how can we do that and what strategy um, can we you know, think about when we want to do that as a fostering relationship. 
Totally. Well, we also want Wanji go in person as well because I'm a big hugger and nothing is, you know, more <laughs> than hugging, I guess. I think, you know, for everybody in the audience, I, you know, Olivia is an exceptional mentee and just person. So that's a high bar to set, but I think there's probably three, four things that I would suggest in terms of this, like fostering these relationships. And it's, you know, again, having been on the mentee side much longer on the mentor side, I think this is where this is coming from. But I think there's this opportunity for us as mentors to actively jump in there with our mentees. It isn't just about imparting information. It's about actively searching for opportunities for our mentees, whether it's looking for awards, internships, what have you, and taking that time. You know, one thing about Olivia is that she's also, in my mind, a little, you know, advocate. And so when there was actually a Healthy and Green Schools bill uh, for K-12 schools in Massachusetts, I was like, Olivia, I need you to help me testify and, you know, get out there. And so even though she didn't get her moment of, you know, glory on Zoom, it was still that these are these are opportunities that I think early in your career can make a big difference. I think, you know, number two is having structured feedback, you know, for as much as there's opportunities to, you know, impart wisdom, it's also about making sure that it's feeling right for both sides. Is the mentee getting everything they want out of it? And can they call you out when you haven't delivered? I think it's making sure that we're mm -hmm. respectful and productive in that approach. I would say the next big important thing is, this isn't about just professional. You know, why do we start all of our sessions with how you feeling today? Because if you feeling like crap, you're not going to be able to achieve that vision or dream that you've set out for. And so I think as mentors, we need to always be putting the person first and then they are the designer, the researcher second, because that's really kind of the connective tissue there. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when Jiko said it really just simply and beautifully is, I think there's something important about being authentic and making sure that the the mentee and whoever they are is allowing to be their full self so that you're not sort of stifling who they really could be. Um, because in my mind, that is what you're trying to do. You're trying to boost confidence because you know your mentee already has the skills, the talents. And maybe there's some times where you need to like get in the weeds and help them and like you know, maybe it is sitting doing some ugly data analysis together or drawing and sketching together and saying, this is how I approach this. But really, it's about them taking their voice, their design approach and making it uniquely their own and you making them feel fearless in that approach. Um, because I think all of us are so good about having self-doubt. And I think Harvard, I love you all, I was there for many years, but that place fosters self-doubt because everyone is so talented and brilliant. And yet if we all just embrace that authenticity, we had people searching for opportunities for us, giving us structured feedback, treating us like humans first, we would actually be stronger collectively. Um, and so I think as far as fostering relationships, with our mentees, it can be multifaceted in so many ways. Uh, and so being at Perkins and Will is just, I can sort of scream from mountaintops, I think I made it people, come on, you'll get there. Because there was days in grad school or in high school where I was just, anything was gonna make it. And so to be on the other side of homelessness, self-doubt, depression, anxiety, you name it, I feel very honored to be able to sort of kind of link arms with others who maybe need the same damn thing. Moment of silence. Yes, I agree. And thank you, Erica. Um, this is powerful. This is really in the heart of why we do this, is that we are humans and we are fostering this for human experience. And uh, we're putting our empowerment of our mentees, of our black designers first before anything else. Um, so thank you. I wanna get, we are at the last five minutes. So I wanna get to our guest speakers, both David and Brooke. Um, and I know that you both have a very unique uh, long mentorship relationship that we all are inspired from and we all are still continuing to learn from. So. Uh, please share with us reflections about the importance of uh, mentorship and um, and maybe words of encouragement, encouragement, sorry, for our audience and the future Black designers in the room. Maybe, David, you can start. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I really like what uh, when Jiku is that how you pronounce your name? Um, I like what she alluded to earlier as far as um, she was um, presenting part of her portfolio and you know, there was a point in time where she felt like she wasn't showing her full self inspiration in the portfolio. And, you know, when we were at rehearsal yesterday, I kind of spoke on that. I touched on that. I mentioned, you know, always remember your purpose behind um, any design, you know, remember your purpose behind what made you uh, go into design. And when it comes to, um, you know, the actual practice, I would say one of the biggest pet peeves is, um, you know, those moments where you have anything that's similar to what I experienced as far as uh, juries, where you have to present your work in front of an audience. And regardless of whether you're good with public speaking, you have to know how to effectively uh, describe what you're presenting. And, you know, you can easily have the perfect uh, design, but if you don't talk about it the right way, then that can take away from what you're trying to communicate. Um, so take that into account. Um, also, you know, not all constructive criticism is necessarily meant for you to do exactly what even your mentee is telling you to do. I mean, don't be afraid to, you know, ask them, well, have you thought about it this way? You know, um, you know, the reason, the purpose behind me creating this design is for a specific reason and go with that reason. Don't lose yourself in the design um, and step outside your comfort zone. You know, um, I would say that's like the biggest part of any profession is to, you know, be willing to do the things that make you uncomfortable in order to grow as a designer, architect, um, you know, anything that has to do with um, pretty much aesthetic uh, expression, self-expression. Um, you know, for me, stepping out of my, my comfort zone was being willing to travel. You know, I grew up in Baltimore. My parents pretty much forced me to move to Atlanta because I was so young. And that, you know, pretty much built up the courage for me to be able to relocate from Maryland to Missouri. And, you know, it's, I would say, you know, even if you're not big on traveling, uh, for both architecture and design, you, you're going to be doing quite a bit of uh, traveling regardless. Uh, so be willing to do anything that will probably enhance your experience. Um, and I would say overcome your obstacles. Uh, as Brooke knows, um, I don't come from a financially stable background. I had to pretty much pioneer my way to get to where I'm at today. And I would say, you know, don't allow for any type of situation to define you that's not working to your advantage. My parents, uh, we struggled as far as where we live uh, for me growing up. So when I had that opportunity to, you know, audition for school for the arts, you know, I had that self encouragement to make sure that, you know, I made that pivotal moment to, you know, pretty much um, become a new representation of my family tree and try to make a difference. And my family is one of the first uh, children to go to college. So I would say, you know, don't, don't allow for any type of um, circumstance or anything that's working against you to stop you from doing what you're trying to do. Don't allow for critics or detractors to, you know, demotivate you, um, you know, and as far as mentorship, always, always take advice, but still remember the purpose behind whatever um, you're trying to communicate through your design. I'll, I'll keep mine. Thank you, David. And I'll keep this brief. Um, I just want to say to everyone that mentorship is a marathon. It's not a sprint and it is personal. And today, if you saw our chat, we're all crying in our chat because it's so emotional for us. And this experience has been life changing. David and I have known each other almost seven years. And I'd say people touched on it. Being a mentor is personal. 
It's professional, but it's also personal. You are advisors. Some people like David don't have anyone at home to advise him on his work or his salary or his apartment or sticky situations. And, 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 and we need to be there for them. So it's the long haul and um, understand as mentees that we are there to want to help you and you are there to help inspire us. David, you have you know, show me what perseverance and dedication and gratitude looks like. And for that, I will always uh, be grateful to you. So I'll turn it back to you, Rania. Thank you, David and Brooke. Um, very inspiring. Um, I think we are at time, but I want to get to one question that we got um, on the chat uh, for both of you, Erica and Brooke to talk about uh, what it takes institutionally to successfully resource and sustain a program like this. Sure, I'll just start and Erica, you can tag team. Perkins and Will is dedicated to ensuring that all of these voices on this um, uh, panel today and the other panels we've seen, diverse voices have a uh, position and representation in our work. And so the Perkins and Will has really supported us, but it also mentorship comes from each of us. You can't put money on this. You can't pay for this. So while there is financial support from Perkins and Will, I can tell you anyone out there who wants to establish a program, it is about the people in it. That is the grassroots of these, uh, these programs. It's time, it's passion, it's energy and commitment to, to rising people up. Um, so I would really put the emphasis on people rather than money and we have the support, but look at the people here. This isn't something that you can purchase. And we do have the most amazing people in Perkins Will, and I think that's in the core of why this initiative started and continued and it will sustain. Um, Erica, any additional thoughts? I mean, just to tag on with Brooke, it's like, you know, any anybody could have a mentorship program, but I do think there's a secret soul and passion that has to be there and connectivity of being willing to open yourself up in both directions uh, and making the time, you know, we can sort of prioritize lots of things, especially during a pandemic or, and yet I think you know, one of the biggest sort of mental health boosts of this whole thing was getting to hang out with Olivia on Wednesdays from like seven to eight and talk about her favorite like music documentaries. That that time is worth giving. And I think you just got to got to be willing to put in that extra effort, even if you're exhausted, because you'll get a hell of a lot out of it. Um, thank you, Erica. And we are three minutes past time. I, I'm mindful of everyone's time. And I just want to close and thank everyone and the panelists. You've been great, amazing. Thank you for the inspiration, for the words, for the wisdom. Um, thank you for listening to us, everyone in the audience. And thank you for sitting on this room with us. And hopefully you're inspired. And please feel free to reach to any of us. Um, we are accessible. We love to talk and we love mentorship. Um, so please reach out to us if you have any questions about the program specifically, or even you just want to say hi to any of us in this room. Um, so with that, I'll close the session and um, thank you everyone and have a good afternoon. Thanks, Rania.